one's from Jackson Blue, who asks, what are the chances J.J. McCarthy is back in 2024? If not, do we look in the portal? I think we're going to two-part this. We'll answer the first part right out of the gate here. What are the chances he's back in 2024? I mean, if, you, if you're asking me to handicap it, I think right now I'd probably say like 70, 30, he's back. I think there are a lot of, you know, we're already kind of having the, uh, the because he'll be draft eligible next year. You know, does he take that leap to be a first round pick? And JJ McCarthy has the trade. I think, I think both of us are on the same page. He's got, he's got the arm. He's got the ability to play off schedule. He's got the mobility. He's got the makeup. I think he's got everything you would kind of look for in a modern NFL quarterback, but you know, there are technical refinements to make. And, you know, also with NIL, you know, if you're kind of on the fringes, you can come back and, you know, kind of ride things out for four years. So uh, with JJ, I think that, you know, if you're asking me to, to handicap how it would look going into 2024, I kind of get the feeling right now he would be a four year guy unless he takes like a, you know, a Joe Burrow esque pop uh, this next season, which I mean, if that happens, then we're really talking, you know, is Michigan the team to beat to win to win this whole thing? I don't necessarily – I'm a little bit closer to 50-50, and I don't necessarily think he needs to take as big of a leap as that. I think that, you know, if J.J. just shows that he improves, you know, he's a little bit more clean on some of the longer passes. Michigan's passing game looks, you know, significantly better. But, you know, I don't think it would take a ton. Uh, then he's going to turn into one of those guys, and we've talked about this, and we, and we did so after the NFL draft as well this year. But, you know, they draft a, a lot of the times on – attributes traits you know he's got pretty good athleticism he's got a big arm he can make every throw which is a great cliche um you know and, and he's shown that he can really shine um you know in, in you know i know he made some mistakes in the tcu game but in some of those big moments uh you know mentally you know he feels like a, a sure thing in, in that regard so i think he could go in the first round even without some sort of monster season and i think we have a question later about his heisman candidacy um but it's really hard to say right now. Um, it was really hard to say on Blake Corum on December 1st last year. It was like, there's no way that Blake Corum's going to return or even November 1st. And then here he is coming back for Michigan this season. So it's just so hard to predict even towards the tail end of a season. Um, JJ, though, does feel like one of those guys that Michigan has had so many of them. Uh, on the basketball side, there's so many guys that leave a year too early, You know, not necessarily for their NBA career, but a year too early terms of really endearing themselves to the fan base and having that extra season to to you know kind of be that Michigan man that Michigan guy on the football side there's been countless guys over the years and this isn't just recently but going back decades that have come back for that one extra year and it was really publicized this year with Corum and some of those guys in the one more year fund but uh, he does feel like that type of you know guy and he has that mental makeup so I could see it um, but I'm a little bit closer to 50 50 I think uh, but it's it's too early to tell, obviously. I'll just split the difference uh, and say 60-40 then. I'll split the difference with my my first take. Uh, I think so often with NFL teams, you're right, it is, it is traits-based. I mean, I don't – when you look at the guys that are going in the first round, um, I think, J, you know, can you really sit here and tell me that, you know, Anthony Richardson showed more in college than J.J. McCarthy already has just in terms of the arm talent? Uh, you know, he's got a, he's, he's a unicorn. I mean, he's got a bazooka for an army six, five, he's built like a tight end. It's maybe a bad example, but um, I think oftentimes it comes down to, you know, if you're a draft eligible quarterback teams in the NFL will look at you and go, okay, like you're talented. There's a lot, you know, you can do pretty much anything we ask you to, but can you shoulder the expectations of, of an entire franchise of a team? And that's where I think JJ right now, it's so fascinating because he's kind of already doing that. Um, to me, he's, you know, in, unless you're someone who is projecting video game numbers for him coming into last year, or even as a true freshman, um, he's a guy that I think to me, he's, he's checked every box for me so far, you know, left some plays on the field for sure. A lot of that, you know, some of that's on him. Some of that's on, you know, that's, that's just more of a team thing that needs to be ironed out. And, will go a long way in determining, you know, ultimately what his draft stock looks like this year. Hit a couple more of those deep balls, uh, you know, sure up your footwork a little bit here and there on, on some of those uh, some of those easier throws. But, you know, to me, I think that J.J. McCarthy, I, I, you know, he's – I don't know that I see him taking a Caleb Williams or 
you know, I don't know that he's pushing Caleb Williams or Drake may in this next draft class, but if he has a good year and Michigan wins a lot of big games again, I, I know there's, there'll probably be a one more year campaign for him too. But if you're getting first round buzz, I mean, it's just so hard to pass that up, uh, which brings for me sure. to the second part of that question. Hold on, real, um, can I chime in real quick just before we move yeah. on? Um, I wrote about this on over the weekend, but and I kind of touched on it too, where it's just so hard to tell. But even when you look at these mock drafts, like Dane Brugler from The Athletic has J.J. in the first round. Todd McShay from ESPN has J.J. McCarthy in the in the first round. Go back a few years, I think just two. Sam Howell from North Carolina was the projected number one overall pick. Pretty much That was pretty much a consensus coming into the season. He ends up going in the fifth round to Washington. If you go back a few more years before that, Shea Patterson, I think it was just one mock draft, but – Shea Patterson coming into the 2018 season was projected to be the 2019 uh, number one overall pick by, I think it was Walter Camp or something, one of those sites. Walter um, Football. I remember well, they, they projected yeah. him going to the Baltimore Ravens. I remember so, that. I mean, I guess I could see John taking him, but he's not going to do that much of a favor. You're not going to take Shea. He, of course, ends up going undrafted. He did go number one overall, though, in the USFL draft last year to the Michigan Panthers. So he did technically go number one overall, but so much changes. Um, And yeah, like Caleb Williams is the consensus number one overall pick now, but you know, and and I think that'll probably happen, but you just never know. So, and that's more of a sure thing than projecting a Sam Howell or a Shea Patterson because Caleb Williams already has a Heisman trophy under his belt, but you just really never know. So things so much is going to change between now and then. Yeah, I mean, for every Caleb Williams, there is a Spencer Rattler, right? Where it just goes the complete opposite. There's another direction. one. Yeah. So was he, he was probably um, number one for a while. He was. Yeah. Who? Um. God, who did he? Who did he supplant that season? Uh, whatever it was. So oh, here goes Spencer Rattler's the guy, and then he gets benched, oddly enough, for Caleb Williams. So yep. Um, interesting how the transfer portal era has has shaken things up in that regard. Uh, I want to get to the second part of the question, though, uh, from Jackson Blue, who said, you know, if JJ does leave, in, uh, what's the plan for 2024? Because then you're looking at a quarterback room that has, obviously, assuming everything goes through and, and Jaden Davis sticks uh, sticks with Michigan, which, I mean, as of now, I would think he would. Uh, he'd be a true freshman. You'd have Davis Warren in that quarterback room. You'd have Alex Orgy in that quarterback room. So, I, I don't know. I mean, is that... You're wrong. There's going to be a lot of change. I think you probably flip almost your entire offensive line in 2024. Again, this is us going way into the future now. So it's even less, it's even tougher to predict than, you know, where JJ would go in a draft. But, you know, if he does leave, like, what is, does this become a transfer portal spot with a one year guy who's looking for, you know, to win more games? Is it, do you turn things over to a true freshman? Which, again, I mean, I don't, I haven't watched a ton of Jaden Davis. That's kind of the recruiting guy's forte right now, but I think I'm can I think I'm confident saying I liked JJ McCarthy a little bit more coming out of high school. Again, he has a whole senior season to play out, and we saw that even JJ McCarthy, uh, you know, he was able to get on the field a little bit as a true freshman. But you know, it's not unless you're one of those unicorn guys, it's tough to do. So 2024 and beyond, let's just go in with the scenario that jj mccarthy does go to the nfl draft what is what does that look like to you clayton well what would be the most ideal situation yeah i was gonna go that same angle where i like jj a lot more i think Jaden davis is gonna be a really good quarterback and and already is a really good prospect at that position but i mean i think you go with the transfer i think um you know if that scenario played out because i don't see necessarily a starter and i don't want to rule out davis warren but i don't see a starter in one of those backup roles and Alex orgy too. I don't want to rule him out, but I wouldn't necessarily bet on one of those guys being a future starter at Michigan in a full-time capacity, you know, maybe a spot start or something like that. And I think those guys can be good, but I don't necessarily see that like I did with Michigan in 2021 when we kind of knew JJ McCarthy, whether it was that year, whether it was 2022, whether it was 2023, he was going to end up being Michigan starting quarterback at some point in his career. Otherwise, you know, he would have been gone and starting for somebody else, but it obviously worked out really well for Michigan. So I think you would go kind of that Notre Dame route like they did with Sam Hartman from Wake Forest uh, this year, where even though they had some capable guys in there, they wanted to upgrade. And with the transfer portal, I mean, being the starting quarterback at Michigan would be 
really appealing. They're not going to promise somebody that out of the portal, but they're going to offer them an opportunity. And I think guys with enough talent, like a Sam Hartman at Notre Dame, would feel confident enough in themselves to come in and compete. So that would be my guess. And I think, you know, Jim Harbaugh would be fine doing that. Uh, he's done it in the past a couple times with transfer quarterbacks and it's worked out. So um, I don't think, you know, in, in 2021 is probably a good example of why they would do that and want more of a veteran guy in there and let Jaden Davis learn behind him because, yeah, J.J. has all the talent in the world, but Cade McNamara led that team to the Big Ten Championship with a ton of help, of course. But, you know, he was the guy behind center there and J.J. helped. But, you know, that was a good formula. So I think you go with something like that. Damn, you can tell you've been doing this a while because you just teed up what my next point was going to be is that, you know, the standard doesn't need to be J.J. McCarthy. It can be what Cade McNamara gave you. It could be, to be frank with you, it can be what Shea Patterson gave you. Um, you know, I, I think you can win with guys like that. It's just a matter of, you know, everything. Don't take this little stretch they're going through right now for granted because it's so hard to have all boats rowing in the same direction. No, it's not Minnesota. It's the first thing that popped in my head, but you know, have your offensive line humming to have the the skill players you do to have the quarterbacks you do to have the coaching staff that you do i mean this is you know we think this is sustainable but it's not easy to sustain it either it takes you know as much work if not more every single year to do that so uh yeah the quarterback situation to me is fascinating i mean i think you know if it, it gets a little easier if jj's around for 2024 because then you're going okay well then it's it's the inverse to where he's now the Cade McNamara for. Oh, it'd be, it'd be a different, it'd different be such situation. a smooth transition. Yeah, it'd be it'd be the most ideal thing they could have to bring in the kind of that next because a lot of guys are going to be going. Twenty twenty three, we're going to see a lot of Michigan players leave. This is a super veteran team that had a bunch of guys that could have gone to the NFL as it was. Twenty twenty four, even more. I mean, the Will Johnsons, Colson Loveland, that class will be gone if they want to leave early to the NFL. It, but it would be the perfect way to kind of transition if you had JJ there for kind of a bridge, you know, gap type of year. Yeah. I think ideally it goes JJ 2024, 2025. You have Jaden Davis coming off a red shirt year. And if all goes well, you have JJ uh, or I'm sorry, you have uh, Jaden Davis and Bryce Underwood competing for the job in 2025. If, if Bryce Underwood now he is to me, uh, I've seen a lot of him now. He's just down the road from us. Um, you know, right now on three has him, the on three industry ranking has him as a five-star recruit, number one quarterback in the country, number three overall player. If that becomes what the lineage is, then you know, I think Michigan's in a great spot. So uh, we'll see. It's fascinating. We're not projecting anything. And I don't think we really have enough. We don't have enough information or Intel to suggest it might go one way or another, but just, you know, I love well, these they don't, alternate. They, they don't know. JJ doesn't no, have the intel to know. Yeah. Yeah. No one does. Uh, but I love I love looking to the future. I love peeping through the multiverse there. 